Hey everybody, welcome back. So it is a nice brisk morning in Minnesota here. We had about uh, six to seven inches of snow in the last 24 hours. We got, it's 11 below this morning and later today and tonight, the winds are gonna pick up. So and it's a light fluffy snow, so it will be, be a mess. But anyway, so we're down in the basement inside. Um, that's why I try to do these jobs in the winter is I don't like being out in this stuff. So anyway, we're on the basement job and we're going to go ahead and um, drywall is up as you can see and the taping is basically almost done at this point in time. I have, um, I didn't do any of the video taping of the actual shoe rocking and actually not a lot of the uh, taping, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk through some of the tools and kind of the steps as I go forward on how I do my taping. There's a lot of different ways of doing it. And um, yeah, there's just a lot of different ways of doing it, but this is the way I have done it over the years. Um, there it is, gonna go through, try to go through a number of the tools I use. <coughs> Excuse me, not all of them, but um, I'll put links to as many as I can um, down below. Um, so if you're interested, you can take a look at them. The one tool, um, and a lot of these are more expensive tools. Um, the one, if you're actually interested tool, is the skimming tools. It is probably, if you're doing some drywall yourself, um, that would be one um, I would definitely look at. They're a little bit more expensive than uh, your normal knives, um, but they make your life so much easier and simpler, just in the design and how they function and stuff like that. So anyway, let's get into doing some taping and uh, mudding and then we'll go from there. All right, so I just want to take a couple minutes and, and talk about um, the joints and how I do them. At least I do them. There's probably different ways, better or worse. Anyway, uh, so on all of my scenes, um, if I have a large gap, I'll come back, uh, go ahead and, and pre fill those if for some reason they didn't get tight, um, whether that's the ceiling, whether that's in the the butt seams between sheets and um, get those filled. And then what I'll do is I'll come back and apply a bead of uh, mud into this, where the seam is going to be, and then put my paper tape in there. And I'll bed that in with a four inch knife and get that just enough to get that tape in there as tight as we can. Um, for that's the first coat. And then the second coat, I come back with one of these mud boxes. Um, this is one, this is a, um, a 10 inch. And how this works is um, you fill, there's a slot in here and I've got a pump that'll pump up all of my mud into this. And then on the back side, when I push in, basically that pressurizes the mud. And then, so when I come in here, go on and fill the second and third coat. Uh, so this, I've got, uh, this is a 10, and then from there I'll go to a 12 inch. Um, I will just kind of watch the seams as I go along, make sure that they're flat. Um, I end up a little ridges, I don't care, that's, they care about that, but I go back and scrape those um, in between coats. And uh, then by the time I get done, so like th this wall here that you're looking at has two coats on the nails. We'll just go through with a um, one of those level five knives and go over the, the nail holes. Do that twice, so the first one will just kind of fill it, that, the, the second one will kind of smooth it out. Um, I haven't sanded these yet, and they're pretty close to being ready for paint. Um, I only sand once. Um, I actually, I said, they do it twice. The first one will come in um, after I get two coats of mud on the nails and three coats. Um, one putting the tape in and two, two successive coats of mud over top of the joints. 
um, on the ceiling and all the walls. Then I'll go through and I will sand that. Um, I use the uh, Planex uh, sander that I have and I'll sand it about 120 grit. Any ridges I'll go back go ahead of time and clean it up um, and then I'll go over that. Typically I, do, I don't use any texture at all. I always do uh, flat ceilings. So what we'll do on the ceiling is come back and we'll do a little, I'll shoot some video on that, uh, putting a skim coat over the whole ceiling, spinning the mud down, trawling it out, and then I'll come back uh, and then I'll go to 150 grit uh, sandpaper on that just to kind of even up. So that will do clean up most everything. And then also what I'll do is in between, um, after we've gotten that all done, um, go ahead and prime it, prime all the walls. And then I like to come back later and um, with a light and shine over and I'll, I'll go through all the walls and take a look at everything um, and just shine a light kind of on, on the side so we can see any little imperfections, something that missed um, before we start putting paint on. So anyway, so that's kind of how I do the flats and, and I think I will look at, take a few minutes and we'll take a look how we do the corners. All right, let's talk about uh, inside outside corners a little bit. So I can do it a couple different ways. There's, um, I can just go in and put, uh, use a knife and just bed in the corners inside or outside. I do have a different couple of applicators. I can apply the mud into the inside corner or an outside corner. Um, or I have the, the sheetrock brand Applicator. There's some other applicators out there too, but um, I did a review on that a, a while back. Um, it's I'll put a link in that. Um, it's if you're doing a fair amount of uh, corner bead, it's probably it, it's nice to do. It just you throw it through there, you cut it, put it in place um, on an outside corner. Put it, you stand it in place, then I come back with this roller, and that these two rollers uh, roll in and it'll bed in and set that. On an outside corner. On an inside corner, we've got kind of the opposite. So we've got um, this is a set of four rollers that goes onto a stick, and then I'll bed that again. You want to get that tape bedded in tight um, and get uh, as clean as you can the first time. So that'll bed the paper in. Then I'll come back. Um, on, an, on an outside corner, I come back and just hit that with a six inch knife or my small level five knife just to clean it all up. But on the inside corner, we'll use one of these. Um, and this will be on a, a, a stick, so I'm not applying mud. The, the next one will do that. But you can kind of see how this is spring loaded. And you've got you would have mud coming through here and then it's got a scraper on the sides and top and bottom. So if you keep that full, you end up with a nice even bead, even if you've got a little imperfections in the wall or something, it'll keep a nice even bead going all the way down. And that would be for the first coat of the inside corners. On the second coat, I've got same tool, but it's a wider. So it's got a, a wider, kind of like the, my boxes. You just kind of progressively get a little bigger, a bit wider. So I've got, this one's a little bit wider, but this I put on this tube. And what I'll do is I'll just suck up the mud from the bucket, snap it on to the TL and then it goes into the corner and then I keep pressure on this as I'm running down and it gives a nice even uh, coat of mud top to bottom. And that'll be the second coat. And then on the third coat, what I'll do is generally, I can go to a bigger one of these, but um, I choose not to. So what I end up doing is I'll just grab a, a, a tray 
and like a six inch knife and run down each side. Um, you can get bigger ones of those. Um, you can do it all by hand uh, with a mud knife. Uh, just, you, you, know, you want to get aggressively wider just to kind of feather it out um, and not try to use the same size. Otherwise you end up with a build up and you end up with a little fall off on that. So um, yeah, so let's, well, the other thing we're going to do is we're going to look at, um, let me back up here a little bit. So these walls are all, um, I have two coats of, uh, on the nails or screws, and I have three coats of on the, all the joints, whether it's a flat butt or a butt joint, whether it's ceiling or wall, I'll have uh, three on those. Then at that point, um, so that's where this is right now. I have not sanded any of this. And if you take your time and don't put too much mud on, I think that's a lot of people will put too much mud on and they'll start sanding between coats, which creates more work. It's more of just trying to keep a, a thin coat of mud so you don't end up, you don't end up with big rises, you know, big swales in the wall where you're building up and uh, you want to try to keep things that are flat with the minimal amount of mud as you can. Uh, from that point, uh, we'll go in and um, I'll sand this, and this is almost ready the way it is if it's been applied fair. It's almost ready, it doesn't even need sanding. So the sanding is very, very light. So I'll come back with the Planex in the vacuum. In my case, you can do it by hand, you can do it with sponge, there's a bunch of different ways of doing it. Um, I'll sand these, the walls and the ceiling, and then we'll come back and because I don't put texture on any ceilings. Uh, I haven't in a very long time. I'm just uh, real, I don't like them. I don't think they patch well. Uh, it takes a little more time to make sure that they look nice. Um, so then we'll uh, go ahead and t uh, put a skin coat on the ceiling. We'll do some, a little video on that. Um, and then we'll re-sand again. So with sanding, I'm sanding the first coat at 120 grit, and then 150 grit um, on the second coat. So we're, they're really it's, um, pretty fine uh, grits for that. Um, if there's any little uh, areas that I've got a little knot, you know, bump up of a ridge, I'll go back and I'll scrape that first beforehand. Um, and then, once everything's done, and we've got the skim coat on, we've got our three coats of mud, two on the nails, sanded, and now we'll go ahead and do a prime. Get everything primed up, and then from that point, um, I'm gonna come back after, before we put paint on, and after primer, is I wanna go through with a light, and I wanna shine a light on all the walls uh, to make sure that I didn't miss something. That you know, there's a little divot here or a little bump there or a little gouge or whatever that got missed. Um, and that can just be a mud bucket and a six inch knife and just go around and just, but at that point it's pretty light. Should be pretty light just cleaning up and uh, ready to go. And then you got, at the end of the day, you got a nice look at walls um, and you got a nice look at ceiling. The, ski, the skin coat I'm seeing only will help um, kind of even out the ceiling. So you end up going end up with um, kind of, you can um, see the differences between where the mud and the paper is, and it helps with some of that, so.
can see that it takes hardly any time. Uh, I'll go over that wall, and then what I'll do uh, is I'll come back now um, and just go over it by hand a little bit, just to make sure there's um, nothing that kind of sticks out. Except the mud for skim coating, it's really thin, almost to the point of being a um, a thick paint, but it's, it's pretty thin. Um, and then I've got an 18 inch roller cover and a pan, and you can kind of see, light's going to be terrible in here, but um, there's areas I've just got done doing. So I'll roll it out and then I come back with this trowel here. It's a level five. I'll actually talk about these in a few minutes. I'll talk about these, these trowels and uh, how they work for me. Um, but there you can kind of see, I haven't done that area. There's where I've actually done it. So it's, it's a very thin coat, but what it does, a couple of things. It will fill out any little imperfections, but it also gives a, when it, you do get paint on there, it'll help with um, kind of that look, especially on a flat ceiling where you can see where the lines are for the, the joints and the nails. It kind of blends it all out. It gives a more of an even surface um, for the paint to absorb to. Um, so that helps out and evens it out a lot. It looks a little bit blotchy now because it is in the middle of drying. That is actually drier. This is a little bit wetter. You can kind of see how I'm moving along. And then this, this spot I haven't done yet. So. so we'll go ahead and roll some of this on. Quickly, 
I'm just trying to get an even coat on there. And every time I spray, I get, I'm pulling quite a bit of mud off there. So I'll clean that, go, go back in my bucket. So I want to talk real briefly about these um, knives that I'm using here. Um, these are made by Level 5. There's other manufacturers. I'll actually put some links up on uh, the description. But they're a little bit different than what you'd have for your normal knives. This would be what you'd normally use, and this is what's been around forever. But one of the things you can see is this got a slightly rounded edge on here, or this has got a square corner. And I know the lighting is really hard, so I apologize um, for that. But what that allows you to do is it, um, it allows you to feather out a little bit easier and don't end up with that line when you're trawling on, you end up with that line if you don't get your uh, pressure quite right if you're turning your knife a little bit. But so I've got, um, this is the smallest one I have. And I think I have four of them from this size all the way up to this one. And I think they make uh, actually one bigger than this also. Um, and I believe this is a 32 inch. And I believe they make a 48. For me, 32 is way more than I really want to deal with. Um, but these are really nice. Um, it's made uh, going ahead and uh, doing my taping off makes it a lot easier um, compared to these. All right, I think that's going to be a wrap on this one. Thanks for sticking around if you stick around this long. Um, hopefully, you found something useful out of this. And, uh, uh, not sure if there'll be a video next week or not. Um, I've got a number of things. Uh, we're potentially out of town for a week, and uh, we'll see. Maybe a week, maybe a video, maybe not. But there's a lot of new stuff coming up. Um, I've got some new tool purchases coming over the next couple, few weeks and months, and uh, looking forward to those and uh, moving forward on other projects. So uh, more cool stuff coming. Thanks.